Hi, I'm Greg Cart. I'm going to give a basic overview on um, doing maintenance and updates to your section's microsite in the higher logic uh, communities uh, area. So I'm going to share my screen and just give you some basic information about the elements within that interface and how you'll go about making changes or adding things to your site. Uh, we will also make higher logic resources available to you in the comments of, um, of the video that we do. So let's get started. So what I'm about to show you will be some basic overview or a basic overview of uh, doing basic edits to your microsite. But where you'll really get the most information is from Higher Logic Support Center. And we will include this URL in the comments section of our video so that you can go there. And really, um, this is where you're going to really learn how to really make it your own site. We're going to give you the basics of basic editing and a few of the features within it and how you build content areas. But where you'll really learn about it will be going to this this area. Uh, it's very, very informative. Um, and the higher logic people are uh, quite good at what they do. So I will include that URL at the end of this video, or rather um, in the comments area of the video. And now we're going to go to the Toronto section. And what you'll see as a community administrator are a few things that the, the typical user will not see. And it's they're located up here at the top, edit page, edit navigation, and some site options. So we're going to begin with um, showing some content in the footer of the home page. Uh, most of the stuff that you would be editing will be edited at the page level. So you would use the edit page thing. But the content in the footer, uh, those areas can be edited by clicking on these little, you'll hover over these small sort of circular dots and you'll see a pencil tool and it will give you the ability to, in this case, edit the footer logo. So if we click on that, we'll see this is the logo we've got there. And it was put there by basically uh, choosing the image icon here. And then this is the URL once it was uploaded. <clears throat> but if you wanted to uh, load something of your own, you would basically navigate to where it is on your computer and upload it to the site. You want to make sure that the image is clear, but not incredibly high resolution because that slows the, slows the response time of your site. So we generally suggest 72 dots per inch. Um, and then really it would depend on precisely where you're going to use it or how you're going to use it. But um, generally, um, 72 dots per inch, maybe 11 inches wide at that resolution. It should be adequate for, that would be adequate for, say, a welcome banner. Uh, and in this case, I believe this one was made about five inches wide because, frankly, it's not used very large. So I'm going to show you how you would upload this to the site. And so you click on that and you would choose upload here. Then you would navigate to where the logo is in question. This is actually the one that's already there and it's the one we would want to use. So you would choose it and you would click upload here. Since this is already the logo that we we want and it's already placed, I'm just going to hit cancel, but you would choose to upload it here. And then once it's there, you would hit insert. And it would take you to the next uh, screen if we'd actually done it. And in this case, I for alter alternative description, that's if it's hovered over, it would have Toronto section logo and the image title is also the same. So we would hit save here and the logo is there. And we would hit save here. So it would make that update. It would put whatever logo you chose to upload there. And once we've done that, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the contact us area of the footer. All of these areas have these little dots that you can choose to edit that section. So we'll go ahead and click on contact us, the edit contact us section here. This is where you would put that information in. In this particular site's case, it was section president, her name, and her, her email address here. And if you wanted to put text there and didn't know how to make that a, a hyperlink, you select the text in question and you look for the tool that looks like a link. You'd pick that. This URL is mail to colon and then her email address. And then the text to display is her email address, as is the title. We're going to hit save there and hit save there. 
This is already the content that was there, so we're really not editing it. But to give you an idea, that's how you would create the contact us uh, edits. From here, we're going to go to actually editing a page. So we're going to look at the back end view of what we're looking at here. So we would choose edit page. That's the page we're on. And this is where the welcome banner has been placed. Down here, we've got the about AACE Toronto section. Um, you, If you needed to edit this, you would select the box that it's in. In this case, I'm gonna show you uh, the four basic tools that are part of this content box. The first one looks like a pencil on a piece of paper. It's the edit tool. The next one is copy to clipboard. The next one is duplicate. And the last one is if you wanted to remove it, you could hit delete here. Uh, to, to, the duplicate is if, for instance, you like this content box and you want to basically use the basic structure of this box, but maybe modify that content to be slightly different than that. If you would choose duplicate here, you'll see that it made an exact duplicate of this particular content box here. So we don't want that. We're going to go ahead and delete that. That gives you an idea about how you get in there. Now, if we wanted, I'm going to go ahead and confirm the deletion of that. And if you wanted to look at the HTML that is used to create this, if you go to edit here, you'll have that option by just clicking on HTML here. So if you know code, uh, this is certainly how you would get in there and do your own HTML code. If you are more comfortable in the WYSIWYG world, you probably won't want to mess with that. So we're going to cancel this. And the basic tools, if you've ever worked, even if you've just worked in Word, most of this stuff is pretty common formatting. So, uh, and if you hover over anything, it'll tell you what it is. So we know that these, this is bold, italic, underscore, underline, strike through, insert edit code sample. And then these are align left, align center, align right, and full justified. As a rule, when you're working in the web world, it's best rather than choosing a font, uh, a font and a size, it's best to go ahead and select the text. In this case, and I don't know who set this up originally, but it looks as if they've gone ahead and chosen 24 point and then this font. As a rule, it's best to use Heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four. Uh, it's It tends to make for cleaner code and a better performing website, but I'm not gonna mess with this now. Um, but as a rule, try to use these headings first. Uh, if it's just basic text, you would pick paragraph and then the headings kind of give you an indication of what they will look like if you chose them. So I'm not gonna mess with formatting that now. But so you can see that the title for this box was created as a large bold. And then this is the copy itself. And it would have been paragraph from these selections here. So that's how that was done. We're gonna hit save here. Really nothing was changed, but that's just an indicator of what we're doing there. And that is basically sort of how to get in there and just kind of mess with things. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna look at, I'm gonna hit cancel here because we didn't really do anything. I'm gonna look at the, section leadership page. And I'm going to choose, once there, you choose edit page. And this is this is the basic structure of how you build a page. There are rows, and these rows are the containers for whatever content, widget, content or widget you place on top of that. So sort of con consider this to be sort of the holder or the plate where you're going to put the food is, is one analogy, I suppose. So these rows are you know, one one full width uh, row, and then this is two 50-50, and then basically 33, 33, 33, et cetera. You can pick those from there. The way these, these particular boxes were made, I'll show you that in a moment, but if we click on this now, and then we, if we move the cursor just above where we can see the, the uh, edit options for this box, you'll see that something's highlighted there. If you click on that, it shows you that that is the row. So you, it'll show you that that's row here. Your two options here are to duplicate this row or to delete this row, because really all they are are in effect holders for, for whatever you choose to put there. So this is a single row that is containing this. So that's sort of, if you consider it like in layers, that would be the, 
the backmost layer. And then on top of that, we've got this content box. You'll see that it's an HTML box based on this information. And if we go to edit that, there are two bits of information in here. And I know that this was created using a table with two cells. So the picture is in cell one, and then the officer name and title is in cell two here. So if we wanted to mess with the picture here, we would right click it and choose image. And then we, as we did before, we, you would upload the picture you wanted here. Um, we're not gonna mess with that because this is already done, but we'll hit cancel here. And if you click in this box and you select this text, you can change its formatting here or you can add text as you like there. So I'm not gonna mess with that either. And we'll hit save here. We didn't do anything, but that's that's the same deal there. So to give you an idea about how to build content, if you were starting from scratch, you would pick a row. In this case, we'll grab a, a single row. And we're gonna drag that above the president's position there. So this is the holder. If we click on this now, it tells us that it's row. So we can see this here. And then information about that container can be seen over in this right column. And currently that one is by default set to no padding. So that would be no spacing above or below it. Uh, as a rule, it's best to have a little bit of space between those sections. So the other ones are, are currently set up at 16 pixels at top and bottom. You would pick that here. And that applies that to this row now. And then if you wanted to put content in there, you click on the build. So we've already placed our row. That's our content holder, basically. And then the content box itself can be picked from down here, whether that's a hyperlink or, or an HTML box, which is how those were built, or a widget down here below. There's much more about the content types and widgets in the um, higher logic uh, support page that we'll show you later. And, and we're going to give you that URL, but this is just basically how you create content. So um, we'll grab the HTML box from here and we'll drag that into our top widget that we just created. It says empty content section is not currently configured. And that's because we haven't done anything with it yet. So if we click on that and then choose edit, we can then add text if we want. We'll say test title. And then we will select that and we will make it heading one. And then we will, this is the body text. And that by default was set up using paragraph, which is basic text there. If we hit save here, we have our newly made box. And if we hit save here and hit publish, this is what it will look like when it's actually the front end. So clearly that's not something we want to do. I just wanted to use it as a uh, sort of a training tool, but I'm going to remove that now. But that is how you create content for a page. So we're going to choose to edit page. And I'm going to select the row that that's in, indicated by the row here. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to say delete. And in doing that, it also deletes the content that was there. So if I hit save now and then publish, we're back to where we need to be. All right, so that's a basic overview of editing content in your homepage footer using these little bullet items that then give you the edit footer, footer logo uh, button. And then for other content, if you are on whatever page you want to work with, you choose to edit page there. And you'll see the back end from there. And that's how that stuff's done. So you can see that there's stuff here now. This stuff is, if we click on this now, this is hide has been selected for this because this may be something that already occurred or something that wasn't, well, if it's February, 2023, then this already occurred. Um, but that's that's why it was placed there originally. So um, you can choose to show it or hide it in this area here. So as again, and this is this is specific to this HTML box. And then this is about the properties of that box. And if you have hide on, it's not seen. So if we hit cancel here and we just go to the front end look of that, you'll notice obviously that it's not there. So that's another sort of tidbit. So that's the end of this section. Um, I'm going to uh, Make sure that I put the, HT, that, sorry, the uh, URL for the higher logic um, 
layout and content build page stuff so that you can further get into it and truly familiarize yourself with making your site your own. Uh, it's really a pretty fun tool to play with, and I think you're going to enjoy it. So thanks for listening, and uh, we hope that you enjoy working in this this uh, cool tool. It's It's pretty cool.